This is NDTV, and you're watching NDTV Profit. It's exciting to inherit a real estate business when you know you're going to add value from the word go. Nayan Raheja, the relatively quieter son of the flamboyant Naveen Raheja, graduated from one of India's most prestigious architecture schools before joining the family business. Let's meet this young man today, who started out on a path well laid out and is now venturing into the glitzy world of Bollywood on his own. Nayan, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me here. School of Planning and Architecture, you must have been a very diligent student. Oh, well, I was an average student. <laughs> but they made us work really hard. Yes, and yeah. how did you make it? Did you always want to do architecture with a clear I goal did. in mind that you wanted to join your father's business? I did, actually. Uh, I think right from the start, um, even when I was at uh, school, uh, I decided I either want to get into civil engineering or architecture. That was the obvious thing to do as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, kind of having grown up in a, a family-owned real estate business, uh, we had to go to sites, uh, spend times. All our holidays were spent, uh, you know, kind of on construction sites. And how yeah. early did you start that, doing that? I remember one of the earliest projects that we ever did was actually in Nenital. So it was a beautiful place. I spent all my summers there with my dad, you know, kind of being on the construction site, uh, learning things there. So, yeah, that was right since the start, I think maybe so six, six, no seven years old. there were no other options. You just knew that that's what you wanted to do. Um, it made you tick from the start. More than anything else, I think it actually seemed like a challenge uh, right from the beginning. It's something that interested me and I thought that I can do this better because I always had. I think uh, that's something I inherited from my mother actually, not from my father. I'm glad uh, to is, hear that. <laughs> is, is, is good taste and uh, aesthetic uh, sensibility. Mm -hmm. uh, so I could always kind of right from the start notice what is right, uh, uh, aesthetically speaking, what is not looking that great. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how the journey started. Architecture was the obvious choice because uh, it had the best of both worlds. It had technology, which I'm very, very uh, inclined towards, right. and it had uh, uh, art. So kind of an amalgamation of both. Amalgamation of both. All right. So tell me, when you joined the business, what delighted you? The aesthetics part of it attracted you to it, but the business, family business as it was, what was good about it? Uh, Okay, so I actually started working on one of our projects while I was still studying at college, uh, so in fourth year, so that would be 2005 maybe. Uh, I joined the family business in 2006 as soon as I passed out uh, of college. Um, initially, I, I have to say that because my education was architecture, I was more inclined towards the design aspect of how the building should look like, uh, uh, what kind of features the building should have, um, uh, how do you present that building to the people. Uh, it was more towards that side, but I think over the years, um, with more involvement is in the business, I've uh, uh, managed to learn a lot more uh, about the business. Um, uh, which also means things like finance, uh, uh, raising finance, or, or or the HR or operational uh, stuff. You know the uh, the, uh, the IT stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, also on the also on the market. It's, it's, it's a tricky business. It's not an easy business to be in. It's it's not. I think I think probably some of the biggest lessons I've learned is uh, in dealing with the government. Hmm. Uh, which is actually the trickiest part for me I'm still. I'm sure your dad must have really helped you navigate that, isn't it? It has, it has. I have learned a lot from him. And I think that is, uh, unfortunately, it is a big part of our business, uh, getting clearances um, uh, from the government um, and interacting, you know, for, for all your all your needs. Unfortunately, it's, it's, it's one of the most important parts of the business. But I feel in the future, if that a loose end can be managed, mm. uh, probably the best direction for the business should be actually uh, technology. 
technology. All yes. right. So, so that's the glaring gap that you think needs fixing in India's real estate business. What is the biggest gap that you see today? Absolutely. I think it's it's a lack of uh, uh, policy initiatives, or it's a lack of clear directional thinking. I mean, look at a country like India. India is one of the largest countries in the world. It's got so much land. It's also got the largest number of people. Uh, but still, we are not able to provide a house to 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 these people I and mean, what is wrong we have the land why are the prices so high hmm. uh, it's you just, tell us why are the prices so high it's it's lack of uh, policies if hmm. you had proper master planning uh, if you look at the history of Delhi uh, for instance uh, half of Delhi would not actually be unauthorized if there was planning done at the right time, uh, uh, at the right pace, and in the right direction, mm. uh, this wouldn't have happened. We already created two satellite towns, and Haryana and uh, UP have actually uh, uh, taken advantage of that fact. And there has been a lot of planning, for which reason you see most projects actually coming uh, in these parts uh, rather than in Delhi. Mm. So I think if there is a clear direction, you it is possible to address the needs of every single person in India from the lowest uh, 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 part of the pyramid to the topmost okay but is it uh, fair to say the developers are very quick to blame everything on policy approval delays there's very little onus that they take at their end I think it's a uh, it's a changing market it's an emerging market uh, India is where America was probably uh, 80 90 years back uh, there's a lot of lessons that are being learned uh, there's a lot of technology transfer that's happening uh, I do agree that there is a lot that needs to be done in the market to make it a more organized market and steps are being taken, you know, mm -hmm. things like uh, getting a regulator on board uh, or things like um, affordable housing policy that, that, has, that is being talked about. Um, but believe me, the private sector is doing a lot to ensure that we are working overtime to ensure that the future is better than what we've delivered in the past, okay. uh, including me, including my team and all the friends that I know in the real estate business. We are very, very passionate and driven to ensure that at least what we can control in the industry, which is the product, is superlative in the future. All right. So then let's talk about the future of the company itself, Raheja Developers. It's still a very, very NCR-focused company. What are the plans? Would you want to explore other markets? Markets geographically? Do you want to grow in scale or size? Where's the vision? Uh, okay, so okay, that's an important question. From my from my dad's perspective, he is. Um, I think he's worked a lot in his life. Uh, he's already reached a certain point where he feels that his company should be more as a service to the nation than as a. Uh, uh, than as only a profit-making entity or, a, uh, uh, or or just a real estate company. It's more so he feels that he should be able to provide more uh, and more to the people as right. much as he can. Hmm. Uh, of course, you have to balance these two ends out. No business can be sustainable only on a sociable model uh, or or only a capitalist model. Right. Uh, so somewhere down the line, we feel that we have to expand uh, geographically, but we have to do it carefully to ensure that uh, profits are not marginalized. Uh, but at the same time, you are able to provide good products to people uh, um, uh, at a good price. Mm. When you say good products, uh, Nayan, what is a good product in real estate? Because most of the time, the brochures look very exciting, the customers are promised a lot, but when the delivery comes, very difficult to actually make sure that the end product matches up to what has been promised and this is very widespread as in the industry okay a typical person would answer you that a good product is something that would uh, match the expectations of the target client so if you're if you're talking about a, a, a 20 lakh house you know for the for the lower segment it it should be able to match his expectations if you're talking about you're not a, talking about Italian marble or, or if you're talking about of course uh, high-end two crore three crore apartments it should be able to match expe expe uh, expectations from my perspective I feel it should be able to exceed the expectations by a little hmm. uh, so whatever the person is expecting through a brochure through your communication give him a little bit extra uh, give him room to earn a little bit hmm. as well uh, from the investment that he makes uh, and give him a product that he's happy with 
at the end of the day and i'm not even getting into the nitty gritties of the right. specifications and so is that quality. what you strive to absolutely deliver? absolutely i think any company whether it's real estate or any other comp uh, company will only survive in india uh, if you are able to um, make your customer happy uh, do you believe in affordable housing you talked about it uh, home should be available for bottom of the pyramid and top of the pyramid but passionately do you really think that you would want to expand business in the affordable segment absolutely i think right now if you look at the the pyramid in india we are the real estate companies are only addressing the top 20% or 30% of that pyramid the largest demand lies with these 70% people um to be able to actually give them affordable housing one that needs to happen is the land costs need to come down for which needs uh, some policy initiatives uh, fortunately my father has been working in this direction as 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 president of naredco uh, uh, kind of guiding the government on on how uh, you know steps can be taken mm -hmm. to make land cheaper so if you look at a 2000 rupees per square foot house uh, actually 1000 is uh, going into the land mm -hmm. and the rest is going into the construction well now you don't even get 2000 rupees maybe i should say 2 2 and a half or 3000 rupees is you right. have to add for the margin uh, but if you're able to reduce that price because obviously you can't reduce the construction uh, price uh, you could with technology the prefabricated or uh, lots of these I new technologies which are coming in i think in. on a, only if you have scale mm. uh, in affordable housing especially the only way to achieve it is to have a large scale development okay. uh, only then would deployment of technology make it cheaper uh, that we have seen actually from the projects that we are doing right. if you're doing a small scale project it's not going to be cheaper it's actually going to be more expensive it's going to be yes scale obviously or just the volumes make that much of a difference in terms of what you can use so exceeding the customer expectation but then what do you think the customer should be getting in this country you know the future of real estate that's uh, something that that uh, keeps my mind occupied uh, for a large part you know what is the future of buildings what uh, is it that people should look forward to in the future and how do you create a product uh you know that can match that that can that can uh, match that expectation of the person you look at the telecommunication sector you look how uh, technology is driving uh, uh you know the people and how it's changed lifestyles i think that in the future and there are technologies which are already coming out in the market uh, uh uh which which can drive stuff like this you can have homes in the future with with uh, artificial intelligence you can actually enter a house and say switch on the lights mm -hmm. and it switches Smart on homes. the lights or you can you can say that uh, put the the water for heating it's going to put the water on heating it's actually a house that is a person that you can mm -hmm. communicate with you can even give it a name so i think that that is something that truly uh, is going to come in in the next 5 to 6 years from now mm. and that's something that really excites me in fact the first steps we've already started taking in this direction uh, this is one of the things and the second would obviously be the largest challenge to the indian real estate industry cut down the construction time use technology use things like slip form construction precast construction cut down that 15 20 day slab cycle period two or five or seven day slab cycle period right deliver a class product at a great price to the consumer and put so much technology inside which is which is simpler actually for the people and can change his lifestyle for years to come hmm. i think that would be a great future that would be a great future naredco's aim seems to be only to project the industry's image or lobby for the industry with the government they don't really look at the customer angle too much do they uh that's absolutely not true the primary um incentive for my father to work in this direction or 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 the rest of the team to work in this direction is to actually make connect the the industry with the customer hmm. uh and match their expectations see what can be better for them in the future uh as well as keep the industry sustainable father heads narrate when you spoke about it but narrate's aim seems to be only to project the industry's image or lobby for the industry with the government 
they don't really look at the customer angle too much, do they? Uh, that's absolutely not true. The primary um, incentive for my father to work in this direction or, or, or the rest of the team to work in this direction is to actually make connect the, the industry with the customer hmm. uh, and match their expectations, see what can be better for them in the future, uh, as well as keep the industry sustainable. So it, it, it's a delicate balance that has to be maintained uh, between both. Uh, in fact, in a lot of policies, uh, guidelines that, that, that are being recommended by Noredco to the government, uh, 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 there is there is the, the real estate regulator mm. that is actually being supported by, by Noredco. I'm there is so happy to hear that because <laughs> there are very few developers I hear who really support the real a real estate regulator. Right. Their so, worry is that it's just going to add layers to the approval process, not looking at the fact that consumers really are at a receiving end, isn't it? Uh, there are practical uh, uh, issues that need to be addressed when you talk about a regulator coming in place. Um, of course, you don't have to make it so cumbersome that it makes it uh, difficult for uh, the, the, the developers who already face a lot of trouble with, with clearances yes. and, and probably takes it uh, longer for a project to, to get cleared because that would not be beneficial for either the customer or, or, or the developer. Absolutely. So it, there has to be a pragmatic approach. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, the, the, the story is that you have to have a regulator in place. You have to have a good affordable housing policy in place. Uh, you have to have new sectors being cut out or new master plans being developed. Mm. Uh, I mean, look at a place like Delhi. Uh, we, we've been hearing about the master plan, uh, but by the time you reach master plan uh, 2007, it's, it's already time for Absolutely. making the next master plan and no development has happened. I just hope in the 20, we don't reach 2021 before any action starts happening on, on the master plan. I, I so, would second you on that. It, it, it could unlock so much of land and it could actually moderate prices in the long run absolutely. if you do have the master plan being implemented. Uh, absolutely. Look at the amount of uh, loss, I mean, to the consumer who's actually going to have to go to places so far flung from the city. How much better would it be if, if there was an open uh, thinking about having Delhi as the center? as having Delhi as a, as a high density development yeah. or, or a high rise development so that you can ease off the, uh, the the supporting cities on the outside. We have to travel so much every day from Gurgaon to Delhi to Noida. But do you there's think no when Delhi that. goes high rise, uh, there's infrastructure to support it as it is people Not are almost presently. killing each other over parking spaces right now? Not presently, but if done in a planned way, it's possible. Everybody in the world has achieved it. All right. So, so let's move on to something beyond business. Does your father's energy leave you, or let's say boundless energy, leave you a little breathless? Uh, there is... Overwhelms you a bit? No. It, it doesn't overwhelm me, um, but there is a lot that I've learned from him. Hmm. Uh, he is definitely one of the most respected uh, figures in the real estate industry. Um, there's something that a friend told me once. Mm. He said, Nan, if you want to succeed, be yourself. Okay, learn from the best, but be yourself. You need to know what you are, who you are. Uh, so I think I follow that more than anything else. Um, he so is how his different own are you from your father? He, I say the relatively quieter self, but are you very quiet compared to your dad? I actually don't agree to that. <laughs> I don't agree to that. <laughs> so the flamboyant son to the flamboyant father. Uh, well, let, let it be open to people. People make their own opinions. Uh, in your work style and in your work approach, what what would you say is different between Naveen Rahecha and Nayan Rahecha? Okay, uh, I am. I'm. Uh, I think. Uh, slightly different from him in, in, in the regard of how I, um, how I go about uh, organizing things. So um, I'm more kind of computer driven, technology driven person than he is. In fact, I uh, initiated a lot of things in the company when I joined and it was a culture shock for me actually in 2006 when I joined how actually business works yes. or how work happens in a... How, without any technology, without <laughs> in the chaos. Everything's on the phone, uh, you know, everybody's telling people to do things. And I said, hey, you know, you can't record things like this. You don't know who's accountable, how work is going to flow in this organization. You have to have electronic processes. You have to have accountability. You have to know this person is responsible for these 10 things right now 
and uh, that's the only way to grow. So the first one of the first things that I actually initiated in the company was uh, the use of an ERP system, mm. uh, which our company was lacking at that time. So technology uh, and processes, you believe in that? Absolutely. I think some of the high points uh, in, in my uh, uh, contribution to the company have been in this direction. Um, so one was was the use of ERP and, and making people more organized, uh, getting the hierarchical structure in place, uh, delegation in place. Uh, so you can depend more on the people mm -hmm. than on, on the top layer of the company itself. That is one of the things. The second thing that uh, I figured out uh, that we can't achieve very easily is that we don't have the construction technology right now mm -hmm. and we are dependent on a very few contractors in this country who can actually deliver a good quality product uh, but even having worked with the best we weren't satisfied so we went to uh, uh, Dubai and got uh, two of the largest uh, construction companies from there mm -hmm. to come up and set up office uh, uh, here in India and work on our projects with us in, in, a, in a joint venture model. Okay. Uh, which also changed the way we do business uh, uh, in the kind of products that we have. Give me two or three words. In your employees in the company, what would they say about you? If I were to just pick up the phone and or do a secret ballot. Oh my God, that's, <laughs> a, difficult that's a difficult one. But... Um, I think they would say that I am uh, process driven. Mm -hmm. uh, they would say that. Hard taskmaster? Uh, a little bit. Okay. A little bit. Right. I, I don't want to go in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. Only good to the people who are good and bad to the people who are bad. All right. So, so fair enough. They're very North Indian trait. <laughs> <laughs> Call the spade a spade. Yeah. Uh, you share your dad's passion for wildlife, but you've got one of your own music, isn't it? Uh, that's true. So that's true. Do you sing regularly? Because we have seen some YouTube videos of you singing as well. Fantastic. I don't know how you got your hands to those, but <laughs> yes, I, I do. In fact, uh, even day before yesterday, I did a performance at Fiki Auditorium. Uh, so that passion actually started back at school when I started, when I picked up the guitar and said that mm. I want to be a rock star. Mm. Okay, I, I don't... See, finally you're <laughs> accepting that you did think of something else other than real estate. <laughs> well, I still think like that. <laughs> so okay. not much has changed. It's just that I've prioritized myself. Hmm. Uh, but that, that started, that journey started at school and uh, went through college, uh, playing all, all rock and roll music and uh, growing up on that, that kind of music and performing. And then I discovered I had a voice, so I started singing and... Um, uh, yeah, I've been performing. At, I repeatedly perform every month. I'm performing somewhere or the other, oh. City 4, Fiki. Excited about a new chapter, which is both marriage and Bollywood. Uh, I am actually. I'm just waiting for the marriage to get over for me to uh, drive down in that direction. Hmm. But why Bollywood? Uh, like I said, uh, because of my inclination towards music, uh, I am actually working on an album uh, already and half of it has been recorded. Mm. Um, an album? Yes. And it's Hindi music? What it's sort of music? It's Hindi it? and Urdu music which I uh, write and compose. Uh, Fantastic. So, wow. Yeah. Okay. And uh, when you say that you're going to make movies, do you have a kind of sense what kind of films do you want to make? or? Something that's uh, something that's socially relevant, uh, more importantly than anything else. One is that uh, I don't enjoy mainstream Indian cinema as much. I know it's entertainment for the masses, but I don't enjoy it as much. I think it's purely entertainment and not much beyond it. Something that's lasting, something that you'll pick up after 10 years and s want to watch again. Want to watch again. Narendra Heja, all the very best. Very, very exciting times ahead of you. A new chapter, both a new career as well. Right around the corner. Thank so that's, that's called a rock star real estate young gun who loves music, who loves picking up a guitar, who also wants to deliver quality which surpasses anything that India has seen before. We wish him all the very best and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Manisha. Thank you.